Hey there, Gemini. Welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to February of 2022. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. I hope this reading, this message, this video finds you well. So keeping up with the uh, same format as last month, this reading is going to be split into two parts. First half of the reading, we're going to be talking directly to Gemini Risings, okay? And then the second half of the reading is going to be the big old general energy. So when I speak to Gemini rising here, you guys, I am using the astrology to talk through this with you. And I am approaching this from a sidereal uh, astrology uh, practice, okay, that we, we work with sidereal astrology here on Divine Conversation. So if you're new here, hi, welcome. My name is Eric. Please understand that this is going to be different than what you are expecting or what you're used to when it comes to mainstream astrology. We are practicing sidereal astrology here. If you've never seen your chart and you're interested in it, I would be very happy to provide it to you. Just send me an email. My email can be found in the description box below. Let me know you would like a copy of your sidereal chart, and I would be very happy to provide it to you free of charge. I am also available for uh, private readings, whether that be astrology from the sidereal point of view or just tarot or maybe a combination of both. If you would like to get a private reading with me, check the information in the description box below where you will find some of the readings that I offer, again, as well as my email address. Just shoot me an email, let me know you're interested in a reading, and I will get you all set up. If you would like some extra content from me throughout the month, check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. The link to that can be found in the description box as well. You get way more access to me. You get more content throughout the month, usually some form of daily readings, depending on my energetic workload. Um, and also you get certain discounts the higher up in the tiers that you go. And it is also a really great way to support the channel, to help support the channel if you would like to do so. Other than that, please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you have not done so already, as all of that helps us with the al YouTube algorithm. Yeah? All righty. So we're going to get started here. And... We're going to talk to Gemini Rising. Hi, Gemini. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So continuing with our story this uh, this year or this month. Oops, hold on a second. Sorry about that. I had to, I remembered that I had to fix something, but it was already fixed anyway. Okay, so anyway, Gemini, your theme this month um, is being empowered in your new vision. Uh, so last month we were talking about how there were realizations here of you wanting, needing, and or deserving more. And this could be seriously um, or heavily involving your interpersonal relationships and your role within a community, the type of groups that you associate with and all that, mainly because Uranus has been transiting through your 11th house, all right? And then your 11th house is your house of wishes and fears, wish fulfillment. Um, so in terms of the Tarot, that does connect us with this energy of the star, right? But then also the 11th house represents your social groups, the groups of people, the types of groups that you align with, okay? And with Uranus having been retrograde um, up until the end of January of this year, 2022, um, with Uranus having been retrograde through Aries and for you specifically, Gemini rising, that is happening in or has been happening in your 11th house, this is changing your alignment within yourself and then also subsequently changing your alignment to the community the collective okay so um <clears throat> the big theme for you this in this energy really during this time period where we have all of these conjunctions happening with pluto uh and everything like that the big big focus for you gemini is your interpersonal relationships your seventh house let's get into the chart so what you have here in front of you is the chart for Gemini rising for the month of February 2022. Now, as you can see here, Gemini, you have a ton of, just like everybody else, there's a ton of energy concentrated within two houses, at least this month. Last month, it was three houses, but there was still a pretty central focus. For us, this month, it is concentrated within two houses. As you can see, just off the top of your head, off the cuff, you could look at this and probably deduce that there's a lot of heavy change or activity happening for you in the seventh house. And that would be correct. Um, it does change, you know, when we speak to the subtleties of different energies, but for you here, 
big seventh house focus, Gemini, big focus in terms of your interpersonal relationships. I am getting for some of you legal matters. Uh, because that's also what the seventh house could be the ruler of. The rule, seventh house is ruled by uh, Libra, you know, which symbol which is symbol symbolized as the justice card in tarot, right? That can literally mean the justice system. The seventh house could also just mean law and order, um, and, and it can get legal because of the interpersonal situation here. So, uh, I, I, I and I am getting here for you, Gemini, with this empowerment within you that's happening um because of the conjunction between the sun and pluto which happened back in january um i'm feeling like that conjunction between the sun and pluto is really emboldening you empowering you to stand in this new to stand in your new vision to accept it to own it to move forward with it so specifically speaking when it comes to certain legal matters if you are experiencing lots of drama with legal situations um this could very well be a, 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 a an impending divorce for some of you maybe it could for some of the for others of you it could be the exact opposite an impending marriage proposal or something like that i just feel like with this conjunction between the sun and pluto that happened in february this not i'm sorry not february in january this is kind of empowering you on a soul level right because it includes the sun which is a representation of your soul it's empowering you to move forward with, with whatever your new vision is okay now mercury has been retrograde um Mercury started its retrograde in on the 14th of January. All right. So by the 6th of February, Mercury will be stationing direct for you specifically, Gemini. Mercury started in the eighth house and transited backwards or moved retrograde back into your seventh house. So what I kind of got for you here during this retrograde, the, the, the retrograde motion of Mercury, this was kind of while it was yes overall for everybody a time to rewrite the programming for you specifically gemini i feel like this was really helping you tap into the transformative energies of the eighth house very much giving you access to the powers of death and rebirth to basically um yeah giving you there it is giving you the strength here gemini to uh to embody this death and rebirth for there to be a death of the old self and a rebirth of the new self okay um and again this is was potentially helping you to rewrite the code right so for you gemini there is a serious feeling of empowerment this month most likely again from the sun pluto conjunction where you may have been lacking confidence in making these changes for yourself. Again, strength. You are being empowered. You are being given access to that sense of confidence and maybe even a surplus of that sense of confidence. So you, you might have to work a little bit with the strength card here also. You might have to work a little bit just to keep your ego in check. I'm not really picking up on big egoic flares here because there is a strong level of balance that's in the energy for you here, Gemini. Again, with this seventh house energy ruled by Libra. Libra is all about balance, right? But with this emboldenedness, with this empowerment, with you feeling kind of connected to the confidence that you need to move forward here, you might have to just keep a conscious mind on your ego and not let it let it run too much amok, okay? But again, this feels good for you, so don't. I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, you may have been up against a lot of social or communal pressure or you feel like you're going against the grain. And to be honest with you, Gemini, I kind of agree with that. I would I would say, I would reason with you and, ra and rationally say, yeah, you probably are going against the grain here. But this is mainly because of what Uranus has been doing in your 11th house here. So you see Uranus is in Aries, in your 11th house, influencing change within your personal alignment, which then influences change in your 11th house energies, your wishes and your dreams, maybe even also your fears. But specifically, especially with this big seventh house influence for you here, Gemini, influencing how you approach the collective, the types of groups that you align with, the types of groups you really want to roll with. With that said, Gemini here, 
you do have these three cards that have just came out that are literally speaking exactly to what it is I'm saying here. Whoops. These cards include the Ace of Swords, the, ma the Magician, and the Nine of Pentacles. So, and then overall energy at the bottom of the deck is the Six of Cups to the Emperor, to the Six of Wands, Gemini, to the Six of Swords, the Six of Pentacles. Oh my goodness, so many sixes. And then Judgment. And then the Nine of Wands. Okay, give me a second. I'm just reading through this. The Five of Pentacles. Okay, I mean, there's a lot here that I want to say. But let me just start with, with the three cards that have just come out and how that refers to what I'm talking about here. Let's go back to the chart. 11th house energies, your alignment with the groups of people, the associations that you have around you, trivially speaking, this could be, I mean, to boil it down, this could even be as trivial as the types of groups that you <laughs> that you join or you're a part of on like social media, like say Facebook or something like that. But it doesn't have to be that trivial. It, in most cases, it's not that trivial. This is a big thing. Okay. This is the big collective here. All right. Also keep in mind something to tuck away for a, uh, for a hot second is the fact that the 11th house is ruled by Aquarius. Uranus is one of the rulers of Aquarius. Aquarius is traditionally ruled by Saturn, but in the more expanded viewpoint that we have now, Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius, okay? So keep that Aquarian energy in mind because we're going to come back to that in a second. But with this happening, this tra transformational process is putting you into a greater sense of independence. Nine of Pentacles here. Let me show you guys. Nine of Pentacles here. Okay, standing in your truth, being a free thinker, thinking for yourself. Okay, um, like I said, you may have been feeling like you were up against a lot of social or communal pressure, or feeling like you're going against the grain. But and I, but I don't feel like you're getting a bunch of flack. I just feel like your perception of all of this is changing and you may have been feeling some sort of internal conflict as to whether or not you should actually move in this direction. This is where the energy of the nine of pentacles comes in, but then also with that, the ace of swords, truth, honesty, integrity, having a higher truth. What I'm getting very specifically from the ace of swords here, Gemini, is knowing what is right for you, or at least knowing what your personal truth is. And then the nine of pentacles energy here, which is all about independence and sovereignty, is is another energy that is representing your ability to stand on your own, to think for yourself, to be a free thinker, to be an independent individual, even though you do have all these ties I am kind of hearing karmic connections, okay? But you still have all these ties to a bunch of people around you or in this realm of interpersonal relationships. And that's not bad. You can still have those ties while also standing in your truth, honesty, integrity, and sovereignty, right? So finally, then with that, you do have the magician. And this is where we get into the next part of this part of the, re of the message for you here, Gemini. Because I was picking up on some energies of you being encouraged to move forward as the change in alignment that you are making may actually benefit the people around you, your 11th house energies, even though that, the, the, that may not have been the intended reason for you to make these changes. I feel like this is very internal for you, Gemini, as it should be. I wouldn't recommend... Even though we're talking about Uranus and Aquarian energy, Aquarius is very much about um, Aquarius is very much about revolutionizing or in uh, 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 in innovation, inventing new devices or new technologies that help the collective that 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 are of service to the collective. The eleventh house can also be a house of being of service to others, very similar to the sixth house. Okay, um, but. I still, at least in this situation, Gemini, I wouldn't recommend that you make these changes to yourself, to your life, to your alignment for the sole purpose of helping revolutionize things for pe other people. Because the, the, the way that we affect the greatest change in the people around us is by making changes within ourselves and then allowing that to shine forward from us, okay? Shine outward from us. And then that... In that energetic vibration then resonates out of you or radiates out of you and affects the people around you 
influencing them to make their own changes in their appropriate time, okay? But anyway, you are really being encouraged by the universe to step forward here, to step into this level of independence, to step into this truth and wisdom, this truth of who you are or what it is you stand for or what it is you are about, because you are influencing change. Even just by you manifesting this for yourself, it is going to affect beneficial change for everyone around you. And then that's where we get into, um, that's where we get into the bottom of the deck here because you have the Six of Cups at the bottom of the deck. This is all about um, emotional reciprocity, the balance of give and take within emotions, the past, your soulmates, soul groups, uh, family, soul family energies. Okay, this really is about the community. And, and that's why you are, or you may have been having a good a deep amount i'm hearing a deep amount of trouble with this very similar to virgo's energy which makes sense because virgo and you are both ruled by mercury um but this is very this this may have been why you've been struggling so much with actually enacting this change because you're like this is the, uh, how is this going to affect the people around me well with that six of cups you do have the emperor underneath the six of cups this is definitely a leadership type energy. Even if you are not necessarily intending to be a leader, even if you're not trying to go out there and be like, hey guys, I have a new way of doing this, come follow me. It kind of feels like the universe is just, is using you as a, uh, right now, is acting through you in setting a new course direction, in leading the way, in being this protective energy, okay? With that, underneath the Emperor Gemini, you've got the Six of Wands to the Six of Swords to the Six of Pentacles. Six, 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 six. You may have been seeing a lot of sixes lately. This is getting you into alignment with unconditional love is what I'm hearing, but there's definitely a victory here in moving forward in this way, leaving the past behind, okay? Bringing in greater reciprocity. This is not just reciprocity on an emotional level, like the Six of Cups says. This is also reciprocity in terms of the financial or just the monetary, just the straight up balance, physical balance of give and take. And there is so much Uranian, and I'm sorry, not necessarily Uranian, it's actually Aquarian. There's so much Aquarius energy that is benefiting you here, that this, which, 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 which makes sense, okay? Oh, finally, do, what I do want to say here is though at the bottom of the deck, uh, underneath everything that we just said here is judgment. So the universe is really calling for this right now, okay? But back to the Aquarian influence here. Not only, not only is this big change in your personal alignment happening in the 11th house, which is ruled by Aquarius, Okay, and then you have all this balanced and reciprocal and even revolutionary energies that are coming from you as you make this change. Again, Uranus, but also Aquarian energy. On top of all this, Gemini, we have the sun, we have the, the, the new and the full moon cycle this month, just like every month. So for us this month, the new moon is in Capricorn on the 2nd of February. Okay. Now, the new moon is a great time for you to start new things. Like in, in my garden here, I love to garden. If you guys know me, then I love to garden. Um, if you're new to me, I love to garden. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, uh, and it's so crazy. I'm speaking through this. I'm pulling the cards. And here's Capricorn right here, the devil right? The new moon in Capricorn, the devil, is giving you the opportunity to start this new thing, to plant this new seed, to get moving in your new direction. Did I write this down anywhere? No, that's okay. Uh, so that's fine. Okay, that's great. So uh, Capricorn is a is a, a a cardinal sign. Okay, it's very earth, it's an earth sign. It's very grounded, very practical. Right. This gives you that energetic background for practical application of this newness that you are empowered to move forward with. Okay. Fast forward. I'm not going to animate the chart because that's just going to take too long. But fast forward. Well, no, let me show you. Let me animate. Let me do the things. Let me do the things. Hold on, you guys. Actually, see, this is the problem. 
<laughs> this is the problem. Okay, here we go. All right, so fast forward here. So here's February 2nd. Well, okay. February 1st into, actually, no, the new moon is on February 1st. Because this chart is of, this is midnight on the 1st of February. And you see how close they are. The, the moon is at 10 degrees of Capricorn. The sun is at 11 degrees of Capricorn. And the moon moves, moves very quickly. So as you can see here, um, the exact conjunction of the sun and the moon, which creates the new moon, is going to be on the 1st of February. Fast forward, then you see how much the moon has progressed just until midnight on the 2nd, right? Okay. Anyway, moving forward here, fast forward, boop, 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 the 16th of, right? Yes, the 16th of February. No, okay. No, not really the 15th. Maybe into like the late, late in the day in the 15th to about midday the 16th, we have the, uh, the, the exact point of the full moon, or at least the, the strongest point of the new, of the full moon, right? But as you can see here, and I want you guys to pay close attention to this, because this is an aspect of how sidereal astrology changes things. Not just the fact that we have Ophiuchus in the chart here as well, but also the fact that as you can see, if you really look closely, the signs, the constellations are not the equal sizes, okay? Virgo is down here, Arguably, the biggest constellation in our sky, close second would be Pisces, its opposite, maybe a maybe a close second between Pisces and Taurus, it doesn't matter. But this is how things change. So normally you would say, okay, well, the full moon, if the new moon is in Capricorn, then the full moon's gonna be in Capricorn. And sometimes you would be right. Normally you would be correct, you would be correct. Not in this situation, okay? This month and into March, it's gonna be different. So the new moon starts in Capricorn, that gets you started, right? That gets your momentum going. But then the full moon is in Aquarius. So while Capricorn is getting you started, right? The new, sorry guys. The new moon in Capricorn is getting you started, giving you that drive, that momentum. Ace of Wands to the Three of Pentacles. Let's start building, okay? You may feel super, super empowered to just get going just do it. Let's just start. Let's just, let's just get the ball rolling. Let's just drive forward. Let's just get on the road, right? Okay. Ace of Wands to the Three of Pentacles. But then by the time you get to the full moon here, full empowerment, full empowerment in this eight of, I'm sorry, in this Aquarian energy, this Aquarian revolutionizing Uranian uh, freedom liberation type of energies. And what do we have to reflect that here? None other than the eight of wands to the nine of cups. So by the full moon here, you guys, you may really be on a straight shot collision course with greater contentment. And not just for yourself, Gemini, for people around you, by you just making this change for yourself, by you use, utilizing the powers of the universe, whatever, whatever energies the universe are giving to us at this moment to influence and drive forward, start this change in yourself, which could really re revolutionize things. And I see you standing there shining, Gemini, just allowing yourself to live freely and do what it is your, the universe is guiding you towards and people just seeing you and being awestruck and being like, how do I get like Gemini? Like, how do I get like that? And that's just by your truth shining forward. Wow. Give me a second here, guys. I've got some stuff coming out. Okay. All right, so Gemini, um, next stack of cards that has just come out for you here um, is I'm hearing is all about this influential change. You are influencing change around you. Okay. You are influencing individuals to leave behind eight of cups that what that which they have been stuck in and, and sorrowful about that, which they have been mourning the loss of, or just been down in the dumps about five of cups. Here you are with, as the king of wands. Yes. Here you are as the king of wands 
influencing in other people to get out of this stuckness king of wands to the four of cups you are standing you are that power you are that shot that infusion of grace i'm hearing but power and confidence in the self to really stand up out of this reluctant energy to move forward and to feel the light of the sun on your face or on others faces the sun here that was all just at the bottom of the deck all right so that's the that's the overall message for the cards that have come out here but the cards the official cards that have come out here gemini are the eight of pentacles the king of pentacles the three of swords and the star again more aquarian influence more 11th house influence the star but you are standing in a very powerful position or at least you could end up standing in a very powerful position the king of pentacles even though you're an air sign i really feel like you are kind of you have the potential to be the rock for others the solid central figure for others to show them to un to get them to do the work eight of pentacles and some of that is coming from the belief in yourself right but the energy that you are re resonating or radiating to the people around you you're almost as standing as a shining example the star of what could be achieved should you work on what pains you what your heartbreak is what what should you walk on I'm sorry, should you, should you work on walking away from the sorrow, whatever creates sorrow for you or whatever creates sorrow for them or has created sorrow for them? This is not, Gemini, this is not really about influencing change by you taking action in their lives. This is all about you influencing change by taking action in your own life and then standing in that new place, the nine of pentacles energy, standing in that sovereignty, that independence, okay? And being a shining example of it, showing where people could end up or who they could be or how they could feel should they do, should they take advantage of these revolutionary energies? And therein lies the message of you're being encouraged to do this, Gemini, to move forward in this way, because even though you don't intend to revolutionize the, air, the, the lives of people around you, you will be doing that by osmosis, just by showing the truth of who you are, standing in your truth, standing in your power, and allowing your light to radiate. Okay? This is really beautiful, Gemini. I love this for you. I want to see if I can get any closing messages here from the Tarot. Ace of Wands is the first card out. Okay, what do you want to say to Gemini about this Ace of Wands in this closing message from the Tarot, please, Spirit? What do you have for Gemini? Is it all of this? Okay. Okay, yeah, look, overall energy is the Six of Swords. And I'm hearing very specifically, Gemini, you are pulling people with you. You could even be seen as the tugboat. You guys, are you guys familiar with tugboats? Um, uh, they're, they're very popular. Like I'm from New York. Um, and so they, I would see them like in the city, you see them all over all the time. Uh, but tugboats help guide larger ships into the port. There could tugboats. There are even some, some tugboats that have a certain rescue type element to them. Maybe if, if like the boat gets stranded or something like that, they can be a vehicle to help rescue people get people off the boat get supplies to the boat that kind of thing right but i'm literally seeing you as a tugboat here and maybe very much unintentionally for some of you you just are just kind of finding yourselves having landed in this in this place don't worry about that again even if you're not intending well really i wouldn't recommend that you set that you do this just to intend to help other people or to intend to revolutionize their lives uh but you are being the tugboat here you're moving forward and you're again unintentionally dragging other people with you <laughs> okay underneath the six of swords is the six of wands back to that emperor energy again i don't i don't know if you really truly realize this gemini but you're 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 being placed in a leadership position the universe is working through you in that way now Ace of Wands, right? This is the new inspiration, the new drive, the new movement forward. Good God, such movement forward, Gemini.
So I feel like this is the energy that you could be embodying, okay? And subsequently, how you are maybe being, uh, how you may be appearing to the people around you. But in terms of this Ace of Wands, yes, you have the Queen of Swords to the Ten of Pentacles to the Chariot. Here is another element of you being emboldened, empowered, you feeling that empowerment, which was driven by the conjunction between the Sun and Pluto back in January. This is the another representation of your empowerment and need, I'm hearing, in some cases, to drive forward. Queen of Swords, it is what it is. No arguments. I'm not taking any other arguments. I'm not hearing any other. I'm not see, and I'm not hearing any other argu arguments. I'm not seeing any other evidence. It's done. It's done. Done deal. It is what it is. We are moving forward. Queen of Swords to the chariot to what was the last one? Oh, the Ten of Pentacles. Cycles complete. Lessons learned. Project finished. Let's move on to the next, right? Oh. Okay, uh, I just remembered something, but let me finish with the cards here. Uh, that with that, you have the Knight of Swords to the Page of Cups to the Seven of Wands. I feel like they're, and the Knight of Swords does kind of represent your energy here, Gemini, as the mutable sign. I do see the pages and the knights as the mutable signs. And the sword sign is air, Gemini is an air sign. Okay, Knight of Swords does technically represent you for me as a reader, but I'm also feeling this is your energy in aggressively protecting the new emotional reality, the new form of grace that you are bringing forward, Page of Cups, Seven of Wands, holding those boundaries. Not backing down, okay? I really feel like that, that's kind of counsel here. That's kind of where we kind of want you to end up, says Spirit in the Universe, but ultimately you could literally just find yourself there. Now, the last thing that I want to say for you, Gemini, Gemini Rising, is... Um, for you and Virgo this month, the North and South nodes really stood out for me because I because both of you are kind of influencing a, a big change this month, um, or I guess in this time period, and that this probably has a lot to do with the fact that your ruling planet of Mercury has been going retrograde during this time, helping us to rewrite some of the programming. But as I was looking through the chart for you guys today, both you, Gemini, and Virgo, uh, there, uh, the, the, the North and the South nodes stood out to me. So for you, for all of us, the North node is in Taurus, the South node is in Libra, but for you specifically, Gemini, and then here's another of the 11th house influences, influential energies here. The North node is in the 11th house for you. Okay. Driving revolutionary change for you and the collective. This is the North Node can be considered as our collective movement forward or in an individual level. This is what you are meant to be experiencing, working on, learning the lessons from in this lifetime. This is your current trajectory, your current movement forward. So for you specifically, look at your birth chart, look at where, what, which house and which sign the North Node is in. That should give you a good general idea of the kind of trajectory of your life, of the blueprint of your life. Because remember, the natal chart is the snapshot of your, date, your time of birth and also kind of the overall blueprint of your life, right? Okay. The South Node represents what, it, what you were in the past. So in past or previous or parallel lives, however you want to look at it, okay? So collectively speaking, the past is Libra. And I feel like... I feel like that was kind of like an energy of keeping the status quo or keeping everything level and balanced for everybody, right? And that could have been a kind of a bad thing, you know, kind of letting certain things go by the wayside because, oh, we don't want to rock the boat, right? Okay, not anymore. Because now the North Node is driving us forward and with it being in Taurus for the collective, the forward focus is yes, moving forward, very earthy, uh, but very loving and nurturing, okay? So even though we're driving forward here, there's still a very loving and nurturing and a slow paced, you know, type of energy. Like, yes, for sure driving us forward. There's no, there's no way around that, but there's still a very loving 
and caring presence within this North Node energy because it's in Taurus. But for you, Gemini, this is in the 11th house. So this is another aspect of this 11th house energy being very, very super activated for you during this time. Oh, okay. And so then one last thing that I want to talk about here for you, and that's the... Uh, the energies of Mars. So back in January, Mars went through a square with Neptune. And that might have been pretty scary for a lot of people because, you know, Neptune is a very deep, very dreamy energy, connects you to the subconscious. Neptune kind of rules the realm of intoxication and psychedelics and illusions, maybe fears and all that kind of stuff. But it's also the ruler of a level of spirituality, right? Neptune rules Pisces and Neptune is in Pisces at this time. So Neptune's energies are really strengthened while he's in Pisces. Mars, while he, while Mars was transiting through Ophiuchus last month in January, he was also squaring up with Neptune and that could have been that's kind of like a last, sorry guys, that's kind of like a, a last ditch healing process. I'm not going to get too much into that because I did record a video on the Mars and Neptune square that can be found on my channel here. Just go back and check it out. But oddly enough for you, Gemini, it didn't, it doesn't feel like it was too scary for you. It actually may have been gratifying. I'm hearing, um, what I picked up for you, Gemini, is that as this aspect was happening, the square between Mars and Neptune, it actually may have opened you up and allowed you to dream of what this newness could be. Because for you, Gemini, Neptune is in your ninth house, which is a house of higher learning, expansion, um, experiencing foreign lands and stuff like that. And so where you may have had trouble kind of envisioning how this future would be or how to move through this or how to create this or whatnot, while Mars and Neptune were squaring up, that actually could have provided you with the expansiveness or the connected or the stronger connection to your intuition or your creativity to be able to dream up, get a glimpse of how you could do this. Now, I'm not, some of you may have gotten epiphanies at this time and really beneficial energies. For some of you, it was just like, it was just kind of like opening the door a little bit, allowing you to peek into what the, to the possibilities, especially if you were really struggling with seeing how this could work. And maybe some of the things that you saw weren't necessarily how it was going to, or how it was intended to work out or be manifested moving forward. But yet that, still that little peek into the dreamy realm of this, into the creative possibilities here was enough for you to allow yourself to really be emboldened to take action moving forward. Okay, Gemini. All right. Yeah, that's enough. That's it for my notes. <laughs> and then of course, I was just sitting here shuffling, seeing if I could maybe get another card for you. Nothing else came out, but we do have the Queen of Wands at the bottom of the deck now. That's beautiful. That talks about your alignment. Yeah, that's excellent. All right, Gemini, let's close this out. I want to get some Oracle guidance from you from the Oracle, from the Magic Unicorn Oracle. Three shuffles here. One. Two. And three. Oops, try that again. This is a three. All right, closing Oracle guidance from my Geminis. There it is right there. Overall energy is card number two. Pure intention, surrender your ego. I also kind of want to say surrender the ego yes but allow it to be empowered as well your ego doesn't ha is not something not some parasite that you need to get rid of our egos are here intending to protect us help keep us safe okay so allow your ego to be empowered as well just make sure you keep it in check and then so your overall energy was card number two but your official card is card number three create your vision 
Do what makes your heart sing. I'm telling you, Gemini, you are being nudged forward. You are being encouraged forward is what I wrote down in my notes here. So this is confirmation right here. You are being nudged forward, Gemini. So just get on with it, yeah? Excellent. I'm gonna leave it here. I'm gonna pause for a moment, regroup, and then we will get into the more collective, non-denominational side of this Gemini reading for February. Stay tuned. Hey guys, all right. So welcome back. Welcome to this non-denominational side of this Gemini reading for February of 2022. If you have skipped the first half, welcome. Yes, so this is non-denominational as I'm saying. So it doesn't matter which form of astrology you practice here. Um, doesn't matter whether you're a sun, moon, rising, Venus, Jupiter, Mercury, Mars, whatever, whatever Gemini placement you have that you're curious about. This is just one big collective energy reading for the collective energy of Gemini for the month of February. Yes. Also, if you're a cross watcher, this part of the reading could resonate for you as well. Yeah. Let's start with the tarot here. Five shuffles. We'll see what the energy we have for you. The messages we have for you this month. Yes. For my Geminis. This is one the month of February of 2022. This is two. Okay, so Gemini, I'm seeing pink. We do have Valentine's Day this month. This is three. Um, check the collective reading that I did for the full collective for the month of February. Uh, this is four. Because I'm my attention is being brought, brought to Valentine's Day. February 14th, this is five, which is right around when Venus and Mars go conjunct and then they'll be moving forward together until their conjunction with Pluto on the 3rd of March. But there's something about that. So already what I'm getting, Gemini, is if you have not watched my collective live stream for the for the full month of February, yeah, where I'm just speaking generally for all people, go check that out. There may be some messages in there specifically for you, but I'm also getting some love vibes here. Outside of that, the fact that, sun, that Mars and Venus are conjuncting. So actually I might wanna pull some love cards. Okay, but let's still, let's start with the tarot. What do we have for Gemini this month? For February, 2022. Oh boy. Okay, that's interesting. Um, now, the reason why I was saying all this is because, yes, my attention was being brought to the Valentine's Day aspect of February, but also I'm seeing pink, which is giving me love vibes. Okay, first card out for you, Gemini, is the Two of Cups in reverse. Ooh, and I don't even want to speculate. This doesn't have to be bad, but I want to get more energy before I just start popping off at the mouth. Yeah. So what's this Two of Cups in reverse for Gemini? Okay, um, two of cups is in reverse. One of the biggest things that I'm feeling for you, Gemini, is breakups. There are breakups that are about to happen. Some of you, for some of you, this may not be the best Valentine's Day. But I kind of feel like that's for the cross watcher or that's for the individual that is on the receiving end of some sort of change that Gemini is making within their lives. Of course, for the cross watcher here, you could be the one that's making this change as well, all right? This is a general reading, so take it as it resonates. And if that's the case, then it's the Gemini here that's being affected adversely, I'd say, by this breakup. But you have the two of cups in reverse, okay? And what I'm hearing is misalignment in your interpersonal relationships, and that's exactly what we've been talking about since January. Okay, January was the moment where you started to realize that you wanted and or deserved, needed more out of your interpersonal relationships. And probably you needed more in terms of aligning with a greater sense of health and wellness within yourself. 
with that, you have the Queen of Cups. And what I'm getting from this, Gemini, is that someone is becoming acutely aware of how it is they truly feel. Some people or someone here is finally allowing themselves to really sink into their realm of emotion and really get to the bottom of what it is they're truly feeling about something, which then is ultimately influencing some sort of change. There is a strong empowerment element for Gemini here this month in terms of being encouraged to drive forward or to move forward with certain changes that you're being influenced to implement into your life. And subsequently, as you make these changes within yourself, Gemini, that energy then radiates out of you and influences change in the people around you, okay? I wouldn't recommend that you necessarily dive into this situation trying to change other people. No, work on changing yourself. Work on healing or fixing a misalignment within yourself and that will naturally radiate outward and influence change for others within their own personal time frame, right? Okay, with that said, Gemini, the very next card that came out after the Queen of Cups is the King of Swords. So there is that energy of getting to the bottom of it is what I'm hearing. Being objective, saying to yourself, okay, well, these emotions are coming up. What are they? Let's find out. King of Swords. From there, then we have, which came first? The chicken or the egg? <laughs> oh, hold on. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to figure out which did it. It doesn't really matter. Because the next, what we have here is the Queen of Swords to the Page of Pentacles. It is what it is, buddy. Homie, homegirl. It is what it is. And I'm getting very specifically Gemini or Cross Watcher that you're really not intending to debate or at least to have a debate with the individuals around you or the people that are being affected by this most or maybe even a significant other if this is between you and a partner. Um, Gemini For Gemini Rising, specifically at least, there's a strong seventh house energy influence here, also strong Aquarian 11th house energy. If you haven't watched that reading or that part of the reading, go check it out even if you're not a Gemini Rising this actually may resonate with you. It may explain why you're feeling influenced in this way. Uh, even if you're a sun or a moon, a Gemini sun or moon. But for somebody here, especially with this seventh house activation, this could absolutely mean divorce. This could absolutely mean divorce. And with the empowerment energy that's coming through for Gemini this month, you may feel empowered or emboldened to handle some sort of legal situation that you may have felt reluctant to handle in the past. But either way, I don't feel like you're intending on having an di open discussion about it. This is, no, this is not an open forum type of situation. This is not up for debate. Because what's really happening here is a transformation within yourself. Per potentially getting deeper knowledge, deeper awareness, or a deeper understanding of what it is you truly feel, how it is you truly feel about a certain situation. And then quite literally putting a stop to it queen of swords and starting a new chapter page of pentacles overall energy at the bottom of the deck for you at this point gemini is the king of pentacles the, the king of pentacles to the seven of cups to the high priestess to the knight of wands to the six of swords then to the queen of pentacles whoa so overall energy, starting you, uh, overall energy at this point at the bottom of the deck, starting you with the King of Pentacles to the Seven of Cups. Um, there may be some individuals or the, the, the people that are most heavily affected by this around you, maybe coming forward towards you with all kinds of illusions, all kinds of fears, all kinds of what ifs, all these different, maybe even trying to trigger certain emotional memories within you to try and get you to stay the same. But you're, it feels like you're way too solid in this new mindset, in this new time frame, even I'm hearing specifically, you're way too solid, rooted and settled into that to allow this, these efforts of confusion or these efforts towards confusion to rock you. High Priestess to the Nine of Wands, to the Six of Swords, to then the Queen of Pentacles. This is really all about reciprocity. And in the Gemini Rising section of the reading here, all four of the sixes came forward. So if you've been seeing a lot of six 
lately, 666. This is literally the universe influencing you to bring greater balance into your life and potentially even greater emotional balance into your life. A lot uh, Repeating sixes is also a message that you are too focused or too concerned on the physical aspects of life and you need to kind of just surrender that and focus on the spiritual truth that's coming through for you here because when you will really align allow yourself to settle into that the spiritual truth here the physical representation of situations will balance out everything's gonna be okay so with this part of the message here, starting with the high priestess to the nine of wands, the higher, your higher self, the universe, whatever higher guidance, mysterious and unknown sources here are really encouraging you not only to persevere, but are really encouraging you to get started, to get going, to move forward here, because what you're moving forward towards Gemini is a greater reciprocal energy. The Queen of Pentacles represents that greater sense of reciprocity, but it all but she also represents a greater sense of self-respect and self-worth and understanding that self-worth and not allowing anyone to come in and drain her of her worth. Like the Queen of Pentacles is not the type of energy to let someone come in here, ransack her garden, you know, you know pick a bunch of fruit while destroying other things that are still trying to grow at the same time, all careless and shit, and just be like, all right, bye. And then allow them to come back ever again and do that again. Like, absolutely not. You will never be allowed in this garden again until you learn some respect, says the Queen of Pentacles. That's what you're moving towards. And again, Gemini, you don't have to do any of this in order to influence someone else to change. If you are making these changes within yourself, Gemini or Crosswatcher, if you're making these changes within yourself for the sole reason of being able to get a significant other, someone or some people really close to you, or just a general collective around you to change, if you're making these changes within yourself to get other people to change, it's not going to work you're wasting your time because these people need to find their way to that change naturally in their own time in their own process however by you making this change within yourself and embodying it for your own purposes that is really the truly strength strong and strengthful way i guess to get other people to change as well because then that energy radiates from you and it hits them clashes with their energy and now all of a sudden they've got some reckoning to do within themselves it is what it is where is she here she is it is what it is right <laughs> okay i'm gonna leave all this here anything else for gemini from the tarot at this moment Ouch. Why? Oh. Oh. Sorry, I got some ant stings on my arm and I just scratched them and now they're all flarity. <laughs> anyway, um, Queen of Wands in reverse, Gemini. This is relating to that North Node, South Node situation that I was talking to or talking about in the first half of the reading for Gemini Rising. North Node right now for the collective is in Taurus. South Node is in Libra. North Node is seen as our direction forward, our way forward. South Node, <clears throat> excuse me, South Node is the past, what we experienced in the past. There's something about the South Node being in Libra right now for the whole collective, not just you, Gemini. There's something about the South Node being in Libra that is giving me a feeling of doing things in a certain sort of way just to maintain the balance, just to keep the peace, just to keep from rocking the boat, which could have been extremely detrimental to many of us, especially in the realm of service. If we're really trying to be of service to others, you know, you, you come down to the level and you try to make your self fit and you twist and contort yourself in really unnatural ways to get yourself to fit into this space so that you can be of service but that is highly detrimental to you to the individual in question that is actually trying to do this right that's what this represents the queen of wands in reverse we're not going to do that anymore 
that is a misalignment. Instead, what we're focusing on is leading the way in our truth. The hermit is the overall energy. Underneath that is the seven of wands to the page of wands, to the strength, to the fool. I mean, like North Node in Taurus, we are moving forward. And I'm going to lead the way just by shining my night, my light as it naturally is, regardless if you like it or not, regardless as to whether you are triggered or not, that is not my problem. I like that, Gemini. Um, no, Spirit's saying it's not necessary to pull romance angels. All right, all right, all right. I'll pull a little romance angel for you. Three shuffles here. One. Two. For my Geminis here, what messages do you have for Gemini in terms of this interpersonal situation? Because this feels so interpersonal for you, Gemini, okay? So what messages do you have for Gemini from this deck, please, Spirit? Right off the, like, right out the gate. Release your ex and stay optimistic about your love life. It's time to let go. If you have been, yo, Gemini, boo. If you have been on the fence about leaving that toxic situationship or relationship behind, do it. You're being empowered, emboldened to do that this month. Well, actually, technically, you really, the, the moment of that empowerment happened in January during the Sun and Pluto conjunction on the 16th of January, which just so happened to happen on a Sun day, a conjunction between Pluto and the Sun that is empowering our souls, right? To really live in the truth, to really stand up for the truth of who we are and all that kind of stuff. And to really stand in the power of this change that we're all making for ourselves as Uranus has been retrograde in Aries. That conjunction between the sun and Pluto happens on a day that is associated with the sun. Like you can't get any more perfect than that. Release your ex and stay optimistic about your love life. And more importantly, especially for my Gemini Risings here, right? Well, no, not necessarily. I was going to say because there's, there's, there, there was a bit of a 10th house influence, but actually, no, that's not the case. But anyway, now is the time to focus on your finances and career, potentially, for some of you. So let that toxic ex, let that toxic relationship go and focus on your independence, your sovereignty, your ability to think, stand on your own and be a free thinker. Finances and career, also nine of pentacles. There you have it, Gemini. I am going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Again, if you would like to get a personal reading with me, whether that be for sidereal astrology or just tarot or both, check me out in the description box below. I do have a list of some of the readings that I offer, but more importantly, my email address is down there. So go ahead and shoot me an email letting me know that you are interested in gaining uh, or having a reading with me, and I would be very happy to set you up to set that up for you. I don't want to set you up. I'm not trying to set you up. <laughs> anyway, um, also, if you would like some extra content from me throughout the month, other than just what you would find here on YouTube, check us out. Check out the family over on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. The link to that can be found in the description box below. That is also a really great way to support the channel on a monthly basis because without you guys, I really would not even be able to be here. So thank you all so much for those of you who are already a part of it. And as always, make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I love hearing from you guys. And if you're new here, definitely consider subscribing. Yeah. With that said, Gemini, I hope you have a fan fantastic month and i look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of march yes beauty must take care mm -hmm. bye <laughs>